I have found the limiting factors of my athleticism. It's peak force potential through my foot and calf complex, eccentrically as well as concentrically in like a drop jump. And it's concentric power. So it's the propulsive phase of my counter movement jump is lacking compared to the eccentric phase. And how I came to these conclusions through force plate testing and what that means for my training and how I'm going to train these things, I'm going to show you in this video. So let's start with the counter movement jump. So these past few days I have been working on building out my Hawking Dynamics database so that I can get really good and detailed reports about what is going on with the athlete and what their jumper profile looks like. Here's what mine looks like. So as you can see, here are the breaking actions of my counter movement jump and the blue is me, okay? So the red are the other people that I have tested. So in comparison to those people, I have really good breaking metrics. So the rate of force development of how quickly I can put on the brakes, how quickly I can come up with force to break, the average braking power, the peak braking power, all of these are relative by the way, so that it makes sense in terms of body weight because not everybody weighs the same. And the average relative braking force and the peak relative braking force, these are really high for me. But if I look at the propulsive force, the peak propulsive force that I can come up with, if you compare it to the peak relative braking force, this is a big difference, okay? And the peak propulsive power is also smaller than the peak braking power. And that is significant. And if we look at a different view, you can see my average and here my average propulsive power and propulsive force are okay. And this is because I am a technically pretty good jumper. But if you look at my braking force and my braking power, these are way better developed in the peaks and the peak of the propulsive power is not as good as the one as it from the braking power. And if we look at the peak relative propulsive force, so how much, how big is the force that I can come up with in, propul in propulsion? It is pretty bad. It is actually underdeveloped, if you ask me. So why do I think it's underdeveloped and it's not just my natural jumping strategy or my movement style? That's pretty simple because I know what I've been doing in the past two years in training and ever since getting surgery back in June 2023. I haven't been working on my sheer concentric power output or just concentric force. I haven't been deadlifting. All I've been doing is regular isotonic lifting starting at the top and going down. And I've been doing a heck ton of plyometrics, which most likely mainly overloads the eccentric portion of the jump. And or the eccentric forces that you have to handle when you hit the ground. That doesn't mean that you don't get the concentric forces. Of course you get concentric forces. You get amplified concentric forces through the stretch shortening cycle if you can handle, handle the momentum that you hit the ground with. And that's gonna develop the concentric part. But if you really want to push as a develop, quite developed athlete, if you really want to push a metric or push a quality forward and improve it, you have to focus on it. and. By having the limiting factor of your movement always be the eccentric part, you will not maximally develop that concentric part. And this is so true for me because I haven't been doing any concentric power work. I haven't been doing loaded jumps, for example, from a standstill. So what's also really interesting is that I produce more force in the eccentric part, so in the breaking part of the movement than I do in the concentric. It is minimal, but it's still really interesting to see that I just produce more force in the breaking part of my movement, which just is coherent with my jumping profile because my breaking and breaking abilities are really good compared to my concentric abilities. So in total, this makes a lot of sense to me because in the past two years, all I've been doing is focusing on building my brakes and how much eccentric momentum I can handle. And at the end of this video, I will show you how I will target those missing concentric power qualities. Now let's look at my drop jump next on which I humbly speaking hit a nice 61 centimeters of a 23 centimeter drop. And when we look at my profile here, I, what really jumps out to me first is that I have pretty low relative peak braking power and peak braking force. Now that could mean that 
my peak braking capabilities through my lower legs is kind of bad or it means that braking abilities aren't really much of a concern in drop jumping so i don't really know what the answer is and i'm just gonna take it for what it is and look at the other main metrics so when we look at my propulsive capabilities i have really good peak relative propulsive power which most likely explains why i hit a 61 centimeter jump which is really good but if i look at the peak relative propulsive force okay so how much max force i was able to come up with it's pretty low if i compare it to how good the power is so here again i'm asking myself a couple questions so yes i've been doing a lot of stiff plyometrics and those really develop the lower legs and they're your lower leg power so it makes sense that my propulsive power through my lower legs is really good but the fact that my propulsive force is really low i also think about my past training and my training ever since surgery has been just focusing on single leg calf raises to get my left calf as strong as my right one and i'm still not equal there so it kind of makes sense that my peak propulsive force is not that good because probably my double leg calf raise isn't as strong comparatively speaking as my single leg calf raise especially on the healthy right leg now whether propulsive max propulsive force is re even relevant for calves or for a lower leg it's another question because the forces that we see in a typical calf race are nowhere near what you experience when your foot hits the ground in a plyometric or in a sprinting stripe. But if I look at this and I see my peak propulsive force is pretty low and my peak braking force is pretty low, it's even below the average of all the other people that I have been testing, then it kind of makes me think that I need to do some double leg calf raises. And if we look at my average relative braking force, it's pretty high compared to all the other people. Maybe that's because I'm really proficient at hitting the ground and attacking the ground in a lower leg dominant jump. And usually when your peaks aren't as high and your average forces over the whole impulse are pretty close to your peaks or they are relatively way better than your peaks, then that speaks to a lack of peak potential and good technical proficiency in the movement that you're doing. So to sum up my whole drop jumping problem here is I have a pretty underdeveloped maximum force that I can come up with concentrically. And my breaking force is the same, but I'm powerful through planar flexion which you can see here and that just leads me to think that i need to work on my calf strength and also on some overcoming isometrics for the calves and considering the peak relative braking force that i can come up with i think i need to do some altitude landings from a really high box focusing on a forefoot and lower leg dominant contact to spring out of the position that way i can expose my lower legs and my calves so a really, really high peak braking force that I have to handle. And this is how I'm going to push that quality forward. Other than that, for my concentric power output, especially through the hips and knees that I'm lacking, I will be just doing some many different types of loaded jumps, concentric trap bar jumps. I will do loaded jumps out of different positions over hurdles and onto boxes. I will do non-counter movement jumps from a seated position onto a box or over a hurdle. And I will to just push the capacity of my lower leg so that I can accept the higher peak. I will do some ankle pops with added load or with added speed. So with a band pulling me into the ground. And in terms of strength training, all of these mean that I will need to do some bilateral calf raises or overcoming ankle isometrics which I haven't been doing. I've only been working single leg to balance out my legs because they're still not equal after this, this previous knee surgery back in June. 
I'm going to do some deadlifts, which I haven't been doing at all because I've been working on balancing out my strength asymmetry. I will be doing some trap bar power shrugs just to work on that concentric power, on that more heavy-ish power. And I will do like I described in my last video because I lack some repeat power output ability and breaking ability through my knee by doing timed power output sets for a knee dominant split squat, which I don't have a video yet for. So I will work on these things for the next two, three, four weeks and see what happens. And I will update you with another force plate assessment on myself and we will see what metrics changed and how it influenced my body. If you enjoyed this video and you would like an assessment like this on yourself with a training program by me or a training recommendation, so a blueprint for your training for the next couple of months, then you can fly out to Vienna anytime and we can do an assessment on you. If you're a coach yourself and you like my philosophy of training, how I program strength, plyometrics, speed, in-season training, off-season training, all that stuff, and you want to learn from me, tap the link in my bio to learn more about my course.